Hi, today I want to talk to you about the present simple. We use the present simple a lot, so it's really important that you can understand how and when to use it. The present simple is not simple. There are two parts to the present simple and each part has its own rules. But once you understand these rules, it will be easy. We use the present simple when we are talking about facts like I live in a house, I work from home, I have three daughters. Here, I live, I work and I have are the present simple. If I change the subject I to Sarah, I would not say Sarah live in a house, I would say Sarah lives in a house. When we do something more than once, we might use a phrase like every Monday or on a Monday or on Mondays. With this sort of phrase, we always use the present simple if we are talking about the present. We are talking about now. So I see my friend every Monday and Sarah sees her friend every Monday. Again, we add S where the subject is he, she or it. An adverb of frequency is just a fancy word for a word that says how often we do something. So I can say, I sometimes see my friends after school. Here, sometimes is an adverb of frequency. I can also say, I always do my homework in my bedroom. I usually watch the television with my sister and I never cook. Never is still an adverb of frequency because it shows how often I do something, even though it's never. If we have an adverb of frequency in our sentence and we're talking about now, then we use the present symbol. Let's look at some sentences. The train leaves at 9am. School starts at 8.30. My second lesson begins at quarter past nine. In these sentences, we are talking about something that is on a timetable. The train company says that the train leaves at 9am, at 9.30am, at 10am, etc. Everything is on the timetable. And in the same way, the school says that school starts at half past eight and the second lesson is at quarter past nine and the third lesson is at ten o'clock. It is on a timetable. They are facts that are on a timetable. Let's look at the example. I am going on holiday tomorrow. Tomorrow is the future. But even though tomorrow is the future, I would still say my train leaves at 9am. For me, this is the most difficult part of knowing when to use the present simple. If the subject is I, you, we or they, then we just add the verb to form the present simple. If the subject is he, she or it, then we add an S. However, with the verb go, we add ES. So I go to the supermarket every Saturday, but Sarah goes to the supermarket every Saturday. She goes to the supermarket every Saturday. And the same applies to the verb do. I do the shopping every Saturday. Sarah does the shopping every Saturday. Here we add ES to the verb do, but we say does, not do's. We also add ES if the verb ends with the letters X, double S, CH or SH. So my mum never fixes my bike. He dresses the children in the bathroom. She washes the clothes at the weekends. He catches the bus to school every morning. If the verb ends with the sound z, like in the verb graze, 
even though the verb graze ends with the letter E, we just add an S to it, but we pronounce the ES at the end. So I graze throughout the day becomes Sarah grazes throughout the day. When the verb ends with the letter Y, with he, she and it, we change the Y to an I and add ES. So with the verb tidy, I can say I tidy my bedroom every week. Sarah tidies her bedroom every week. And finally, with the verb have, we say I have, you have, we have, they have, but he, she and it has. Not haves, but has. This is an irregular form. And the same would apply with the verb have to. I have to, you have to, we have to, they have to, but he, she and it has to. For all verbs in the English language, except for the verbs to be and can, when we form a question, we use the word do or does plus the verb. I work from home becomes do I work from home. You sleep a lot becomes do you sleep a lot. We help at the shop becomes do we help at the shop. And they catch the bus to school becomes do they catch the bus to school. With I, you, we and they, we use the word do and the verb. When the subject is he, she or it, we use does. So he lives in an apartment becomes does he live in an apartment. We say does he live and not does he lives because we only need one s in the sentence. She eats at one o'clock becomes does she eat at one o'clock and it works becomes does it work. When we want to add a question word so that we get extra information out of the question, then we just put the question word in front of the question. So I would say, where do I work? Why do you sleep a lot? Why do we help at the shop? What time do they catch the bus to school? And for he, she and it, we would say, where does he live? What time does she eat? How does it work? With I, you, we and they, we use do plus not plus the verb. So I do not work from home. You do not sleep a lot. We do not help at the shop. And they do not catch the bus to school. With he, she and it, we say he does not live in an apartment, not he does not lives, because we only need one S in the sentence. She does not eat at one o'clock. It does not work. The words do and not together make don't. So I can say I do not work from home and I can also say I don't work from home. The words does and not together make doesn't. He does not live in an apartment or he doesn't live in an apartment. For the subject he, we could have my teacher or we could also have Peter. We could say he works very hard. My teacher works very hard. Peter works very hard. For the subject we, we could say my dad and I, or we could say John and I. So I could say we live on a farm, my dad and I live on a farm, or John and I live on a farm. We is always somebody and I. And for they, we could say the teachers, or John and Anne and Mary. We could say they stay at school very late or the teachers stay at school very late or 
John and Anne and Mary stay at school very late. We have to know what the subject of the sentence is because that affects the verb. So if we have John and Anne and Mary, that is three people, so therefore we are talking about either we or they. And here it has to be they because I do not say somebody and I, because that would be we. The verb to be is never normal. We say I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, they are. The verb to be always has different rules. There is one rule for all verbs in the English language and there is another rule for the verb to be and also can. Three facts about me using the verb to be are I am British, I am a woman and I am a teacher. With he, we can say, he is in the garden. My friend is in the garden. Peter is in the garden. With they, we can say, they are at work. My parents are at work. Mum and dad are at work. When we ask a question with the verb to be, we just switch around the subject and the verb. So we would say, Am I a teacher? Is he in the garden? Are they at work? We could also say, is Peter in the garden? Or, is my friend in the garden? We could also say, are my parents at work? Or, are mum and dad at work? If we have a question word, then we just put this in front of the question. So I would say, how am I a teacher? Where is he in the garden? Why are my parents at work? To make a sentence negative, we just put not after am, is or are. I am not a teacher. He is not in the garden. They are not at work. The words I and am together make I'm. You are your. He is he's. Make sure you say he's and not his. She is she's. It is it's. We are we're. They are there. So I can say I'm a teacher. You're a student. He's at school. We're at work. There at the shops. The words is plus not together make isn't. So I can say he is not at work. He isn't at work. I can also say he's not at work. The words are and not together make aren't. So I can say you are not a student. You aren't a student. I can also say you're not a student. And contractions are quite tricky but we use them a lot so it's very important to understand which two words go together to make one. Finally the word can. Now can stays the same for all subjects. Can needs to have another verb with it. So you cannot just say, I can. You have to say, I can work or I can see. But can itself is very easy because it does not add an S, it just stays the same. If we want to ask a question using can, we just switch around the subject and the verb. So I can work today becomes can I work today? You can work tomorrow becomes can you work tomorrow? We just switch around the subject and the verb. To make can negative, we just put not after can. So I cannot work today, you cannot work tomorrow. Cannot is one word. 
and we can make that word smaller and we can say can't. I cannot work today. I can't work today. I hope you found this lesson useful. Please let me know in the comments section if you have any questions about the present simple or about any other part of English. You can also send me an email or you can get in touch with me on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.